Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss on YouTube. And did you know that it was a secret on the set of The Empire Strikes Back that Darth Vader would say, I am your father? In the script, his line read, Obi-Wan killed your father. Only director Irvin Kershner and the producers of the film knew the real line. Mark Hamill was told right before he filmed his close-up for the scene. And that's the first of many behind-the-scenes film facts I'm going to share with you today. Let's get started. Marlon Brando never read Heart of Darkness before filming its movie adaptation, Apocalypse Now. He fought often with director Francis Ford Coppola about this, and Coppola would read the book out loud to him on the set. Speaking of Coppola, during a particularly hard day of shooting The Godfather, he was in a restroom stall when two crew members came into the room. They said, Coppola will never make another big picture. Everyone agrees that he doesn't know what he's doing. He got embarrassed and lifted his shoes up so they couldn't see him. When Shelob stabs Frodo in Lord of the Rings Return of the King, Elijah Wood had Alka-Seltzer tablets in his mouth, so it would foam. Another low-budget special effect, Zachary Quinto, aka Spock in the recent Star Trek films, can't actually do the Vulcan salute, so the crew glued his fingers that way. Speaking of Star Trek, the Michael Myers mask for the first Halloween movie was a Captain Kirk mask painted white. It cost $1.98. Another movie villain associated with the color white is Hannibal Lecter from The Silence of the Lambs. It was Anthony Hopkins' idea to dress that way because he's afraid of dentists. Speaking of costumes, the Cowardly Lion costume for The Wizard of Oz weighed 90 pounds. The dude's clothes in The Big Lebowski were much less work. Jeff Bridges mostly just wore stuff from his own wardrobe. Sean Connery wore a hairpiece every time he played James Bond. While filming Borat, Sasha Baron Cohen attracted the attention of the police, the FBI, and the Secret Service. Apparently, there were so many complaints about a Middle Eastern man driving around America in an ice cream truck that a whole FBI team was assigned to him. While shooting The Matrix Reloaded in The Matrix Revolutions, Keanu Reeves gave the entire stunt team Harley Davidson motorcycles. Michelle Rodriguez and Jordana Brewster didn't have driver's licenses when they got cast in The Fast and the Furious, so they had to take lessons before production. Another actor who had to get a driver's license to get a part, Nat Wolf in the movie Paper Towns. Charlie Sheen stayed awake for 48 hours before he filmed his scene in Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Wait a second, Meredith. How would Charlie Sheen stay awake for 48 straight hours? Oh. The scene in Pulp Fiction in which John Travolta stabs an adrenaline shot into the chest of Uma Thurman was filmed differently than it looks. He pulled the needle out of her chest and then it was reversed in post. Rupert Grint was kicked off the Harry Potter set while Emma Watson and Daniel Radcliffe were filming their kissing scene because he was laughing too much. Another laugher was Princess Bride director Rob Reiner. He left the set for giggling excessively while Billy Crystal was shooting some scenes. Crystal would tell Reiner, go home and you'll just see it tomorrow. Speaking of directors, it took David Lynch five years to complete his film Eraserhead, and during that time, Lynch took on a Wall Street Journal paper route to support himself and the project. Eraserhead was one of Stanley Kubrick's favorite films, by the way. He screened it for the cast and crew of The Shining. The ping pong scene in Forrest Gump was shot without a ball. It was added later with CGI. Which makes me wonder why they didn't use CGI for the domino scene in V for Vendetta. The domino V that gets knocked over contains 22,000 dominoes. It took four experts 200 hours to set up. Okay, gotta make a note of this. Career goal, become a domino expert. The script for Casablanca was still being written while they were in production, which Ingrid Bergman hated because she didn't know which character she was supposed to act in love with. When she asked director Michael Curtiz, he told her to quote, Play it in between. Another actor who had a problem with the script was Harrison Ford while filming Raiders of the Lost Ark. He had dysentery and he was supposed to film a long fight sequence with a swordsman. So when he got to set, he told Steven Spielberg, let's just shoot the sucker. Spielberg replied, I just thought the same thing this morning. Coolest person ever? or coolest person ever. By the way, Indiana, I'm not sure that's your best hero pose. And speaking of Indiana Jones, a hurricane hit the Hawaii set of a later Spielberg film, Jurassic Park, and the helicopter pilot who came to rescue the crew was Fred Sorensen, who played the pilot in the opening of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Rocky has this unscripted moment when he points out that he's wearing the wrong color shorts in the poster above the boxing ring. The film's prop department genuinely made that mistake, so the line was added. Alfred Hitchcock did all of his direct directing for a rear window from within Jeff's apartment. The other actors wore earpieces so he could tell them what to do. At the start of filming The Sound of Music, the film Mary Poppins hadn't been released yet, so when Julie Andrews taught the seven child actors the song Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious on the first day of filming, they thought she'd made it up and was a genius. In fact, of course, she hadn't made it up, but she is a genius. The Alien set had some unusual neighbors. The rock band The Who spent some time rehearsing one soundstage over. It came in handy when Ridley Scott was filming the 
the egg chamber scene and borrowed some blue laser lights from the band. During production on Groundhog Day, Bill Murray got bitten by the groundhog twice, so he had to get rabies shots. And finally, I returned to my salon to tell you that during an important scene in the movie Memento, the character Teddy says, you don't have a clue, you freak. Director Christopher Nolan didn't like the way that actor Joe Pantoliano said the line, so he went back and dubbed over it in post-production. Nolan himself delivers Teddy's line. One year after the film came out, the Sundance Channel's documentary show Anatomy of a Scene interviewed Pantoliano and asked how he felt about the dubbing. He responded, this is the first time hearing about it. Thanks for watching Metal Floss on YouTube, which is made with the help of all of these nice people. Don't forget to watch our other shows on this channel, and as we say in my hometown, don't forget that Obi-Wan killed your father.